Right, good evening and welcome here to Rochester High School and tonight's TRC matchup between your Rochester Zebras and the visiting Tippecanoe Valley Vikings. JV match just getting ready to go here at Rochester. So we have the Lady Zebras and Lady Vikings for the Rochester JV team. Max Preps has them at 5-8, and 3-3 three and three in conference play. I do not have a record listed in Max Preps for Tippecanoe Valley on their JV side. So we are underway. How to Shell starts off the Lady Zebras with the serve. And that first point is going to go to the Vikings. Tipped over point, Vikings to zero. Avery Wagner serving and she sends an ace. Howard able to get that one across. Durkis gets that out of the bleachers. And that one drops down. Kill for Howard. And the Zebras get on the board. And Howard will go back to serve. And that's going to drop down. How to shell a nice try there to get in front of that one, but not able to get underneath it. Back to serve is Maddie Thompson. And Dara Strasser puts that one home for a Rochester point. There we'll go back to serve. How to shell with a nice dig. And that one hit into the net. Kaylee Costello hits it into the net. Clevenger attempts the dig, but it goes into the net. Point to the Vikings. Costello back to serve. And a good try there by Strasser. Not able to get that one across. Three in favor of the Vikings. A 
Costello remains at the service line and another ace for Costello. Makes it 9-3 and Coach Durkis wants a timeout. Talk it over with the Lady Zebras. They were back to within one, but four in a row, five in a row actually for Tippecanoe Valley has given them a six-point lead here in the first set. Got a couple other volleyball matches going on tonight. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Soccer sectionals started last night. The Argus Dragons defeated the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings over at Fort Wayne Canterbury in the first game of the 2A Canterbury sectional, 6-0. So congratulations, Argus. Now you get to play number one Fort Wayne Canterbury tomorrow night. The Rochester Zebras will be taking on uh, Fort Wayne Concordia in their first round matchup. I think they're number five in the state, so um, that's a tough, tough sectional. Val and I talked about that pretty extensively in talking sports. <laughs> of course, the uh, Rochester Lady Zebras soccer team is playing Culver right now up in Argus in their first round soccer sectional matchup with the Cavaliers. And Val is up there covering that one. He'll be down later for senior night and the varsity matchup here. Let's see if I can get you an update. Last I saw, Culver had a 1 0 lead. And it is 2-1 in favor of the Cavaliers with 29-24 left. So the Zebras get on the board. Val says Emily Basham, last Rochester player to appear to touch the ball. But it might have been an own goal. At the half in uh, Fort Wayne, Concordia leads Rochester in boys' soccer sectional action, 5-0. The Argus Dragons uh, will be playing after the conclusion of the Rochester-Culver matchup. There in Argus, taking on Bremen in their first round matchup. That one hit into the net. We'll have championship round coverage from Argus on Saturday at 7. On RTC TV4, championship round coverage from Caston. The Caston uh, boys 1A sectional taking place this week. It's a small one, only four teams. And uh, we'll be getting that one for you on uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. Tip down for a point. Valley leads 14-5 here in set number one. Romero Callahan served that one for Tiffany Valley. That one drops in between in the open spot, makes it 15-5. Favor of the Vikings, Coach Durkis wants another timeout here, talking over with the girls. Of 
varsity contest, of course, coming up next. It is senior night here in Rochester. Going to be celebrating the four Zebras seniors, Kenzie Bradley, Lexi Thomas, Emily Hughes, and Kylie Houston of the Rochester Zebras going to be celebrated here. I assume it would be in between the JV and varsity matchups. So stay tuned for that senior night activities. The Zebras come in at 10 and 15, 4 and 3 in conference play. The Tiffany Valley Vikings 17 and 9, 6 and 1. Their only loss coming to Wabash last week at home. And that one's going to go long, so the timeout by Coach Durkis did work. And Durkis is back to serve for the Zebras. Man, that one's going to drop in right inside the side on the far side. Point for the Vikings. Strasser hits that one long. Emma Patrick serving for the Vikings. And Durkis, free ball kill right in front of Patrick. Zebras get the serve back. And going back is Mia How to Shell to serve for the Zebras. And that one is hit long by Thompson. And that one is hit wide by Wagner. So a couple in a row here for How to Shell. And the Zebras backed within eight. And an ace from Hattachel drops it in right in front of the defense. And the Vikings going to call a timeout. Coach Baldini doesn't like what she's seen from her Lady Vikings here. As there's three in a row, and the Rochester Zebras have cut it down to a seven-point advantage. Still in the first set of the JV matchup here at Rochester tonight. So on uh, tomorrow's agenda, um, won't have anything on uh, live on Channel 4, but on Thursday, it's going to be a smorgasbord of some volleyball coming up. Rochester hosting Whitco, Pioneer hosting Twin Lakes, Caston hosting Lakeland Christian, Tippecanoe Valley hosting Southwood, and Winnemac will be hosting Logan Sport be the last night of regular season volleyball coverage for us as the sectionals will begin next week. Talk more about that with Val here later in the week in our weekly episode of Talking Sports. Pretty good draw for the Rochester Zebras as they don't have to go to Bremen until Saturday. They will get an opportunity to see who the winner of the first round is as they got the bye. 
And that breaks how to shells serve. And going back to serve is Avery Wagner for the Vikings. Eighteen eleven in favor of Valley. Finally, it goes out. That was a long volley there between the two. Strasser hits it long point to the Vikings. Valley back in front by eight. That kill attempt is going to go long for Thompson. Taylor Howard back to serve for the Zebras. And Lett gets that one down. Another one drops down point for the Zebras. Back to within five. Another timeout called by Coach Baldini. Zebras not going down without a fight here in the first set. They were down by as many as ten at a couple different points in this set. Have battled back to within five, 19-14. So Howard with the serve coming out of the Valley timeout. Can Valley break the serve? And that's going to be a point. So they do get the point and now have the serve. Going back to serve is Maddie Thompson. Vikings lead 20 to 14. Not much uh, anybody could do there. That one went right over How to Shell, and she couldn't get out of the way. 21 14, back up to seven here in favor of the Vikings. And How to Shell able to get that one down, breaking the serve. Strasser back to serve now for Rochester. And Let can't get it over. 22 points now for Valley. Costello back to serve for the Vikings. And Bollinger with the kill. And Lett goes back to serve for Rochester. It's 
Sabres within six again. And that doesn't go over for the Vikings. So the Zebras clawing back here to within five again. Let's see if they can get it under five this time. Let has the serve. I believe both coaches are out of timeouts here as they've called two in the set. That one drops in for a Viking point. Lisa Smith checks into the game and she will be serving. And that one goes down on the Vikings side. So a point for Rochester. Howard comes in. Clevenger will be serving. Zebras back to within five, but the Vikings within two of closing out this set. Strasser with a nice play there on the dig. Let tips it over and it drops. They're back to within four, but they don't have any wiggle room here as the Vikings have 23. Clevenger on the serve. Little rainbow lollipop serve there by Clevenger. Dug out, but unfortunately drops out of bounds on the Vikings side. So set point here for Tippecanoe Valley. Back to serve is the libero, Kerrigan Callahan. Trying to close out set number one here for the Vikings. And Howard not going to let him do it on that one. Drops that in for a point. Back to serve is number 25, Haley Durkis. Absolutely no wiggle room. That's a lift. So a good start there. Zebras within three, but can't have any errors here. It is still set point for Valley. This is their third opportunity. Oh, Durkis tried to go over in two, but she falls short. And the Vikings take set number one, 25-21 over the Rochester Zebras. We will move into set number two here in just a moment. Be back with that action here from Rochester High School. Thanks for tuning in, RTC TV4. All right, welcome back here to Rochester High School as we get set for match or uh, set number two of the JV match. Tiffany Valley won the first set, 25-21. So the Zebra's going to have to come back here and win two in a row if they want to take this match. Just had an update from Argus with about 12 minutes to go. Culver, Lady Cavaliers, four, and your Rochester Lady Zebras, one, in girls soccer sectional action. So a couple more Culver goals since the last update that we had from Val. And it looks like the uh, Cavaliers might be advancing over to play the winner of Argus and Bremen, which will be coming up after the first game. So the Vikings get on the board first here in set number two. Wagner starting off on the service line again for the Vikings. Hits it long. 
Good valley there, but the Vikings pick up the point. Wagner back to serve again here for the Vikings, and that will be an ace. This is what happened in the first set. The uh, Vikings had a uh, big lead, I think 15-5 at one point, before Rochester was able to claw their way back. See if they can end it here early. They get the serve. How to Shell comes back to serve for Rochester. And Strasser puts that one home. Big hit from the lefty. Clevenger, great dig. And they're going to say Valley in the net. So the Zebras back even three apiece. Hard-fought point there earned by the Zebras. And how to shell with the ace and the Zebras with their first lead of the evening. Three in a row from the service line for the freshman how to shell. And Wagner tried to tip it over and came up a little short. So now a two-point lead for the Zebras. And tipped out and across by Strasser, but drops out of bounds. So the serve goes back over to the Vikings. Going back to serve is number seven, Matty Thompson. And Strasser comes up short. All square at five. And the ace, that puts the Vikings back in front by one. Good service run here by Thompson. And the pass into the net. So Thompson puts the Vikings back up by two. And an ace for Thompson. Four in a row for Thompson. Five straight points for the Vikings. And they now lead 8-5 after trailing 3-5. And that's going to drop in as they kill the serve of Thompson. Taylor Howard able to drop that one down right on the sideline, and she will go back to serve here for Rochester. And Howard is wide left with her serve.
And that's a point for the Vikings. And a timeout by the Rochester Zebras. Tiffany Valley back in front by 4 10 6 here in set number two. So the mercy rule in effect at Fort Wayne Canterbury as the Concordia, Fort Wayne Concordia, gosh, are they the Knights? Boy, I wish I remember that. Anyway, Fort Wayne Concordia 9, the Rochester Zebras 0. So that one is over. The Zebras boys are eliminated tonight. Congratulations. Coach Roke and the boys with a great season. A lot of good things to come for Rochester in soccer. That went into the net. That will put Strasser back to serve for the Zebras. And that gets them back to within two. Strasser sends it over. And not able to corral that one, so the serve goes back over to the Vikings with an 11-9 lead. Smith back to serve for Tippecanoe Valley. And they're going to call the Vikings in the net. And I'll put Lily Lett back to serve. Rochester trailing by one. And the kill on that one by Dunwoody evens it up at 11. And the Zebras regain the lead, 12-11. And a timeout called by Coach Baldini and the Lady Vikings as the Zebras have battled back in front here 12-11 in set number two. So the Vikings, or the Zebras boys team is done, eliminated 9-0 by Fort Wayne Concordia. Well now, that's interesting. It was 4-1 in favor of Culver with 12 minutes to go. Val just tweeted with 6.58 left. It is Culver 4, Rochester 3. So the Lady Zebras have punched a couple of uh, goals in and are back to within one with a little under seven minutes to go in the game up at Argus. We'll keep you up to date here as soon as I hear anything else. Yeah. 
And Dunwoody just misses the line. Evens it at 12. And going back to serve for Valley is Kerrigan Callahan. And Wagner into the net. Dirk is back to serve. Nope, check that. Clevenger back to serve. Cross quarter from How to Shell. And the Vikings were in the net. Point Zebra is ahead now by two. Clevenger still serving. Point for Rochester, 15-12, now trying to force a third set. Howard drops it in with the kill. Close to a lift there by the Vikings, no call. Cross quarter pass goes into the net and that's gonna kill the serve of Rochester. So Emma Patrick will go back and serve for Valley. Nice play, Strasser getting that across. Didn't have a lot of room to work and it drops in for the Zebras. Big play there by Dara Strasser. And Durkis back to serve for Rochester. Howard with a nice job digging that out. Clevenger with a good dig. Strasser with a dig. And it drops down. Wagner puts it home. Oh, they're going to call. Nope, they're not going to call. Thought they made a call there. 17 14. Nice job. Oh, 
And long for Strasser. Wagner back to serve for the Vikings. Rochester still in front by two. And that one goes long. Giving the serve back over to Rochester. And Hadashell will have the serve with the Zebras leading 18-15. And that one drops in. Thompson with the kill for Valley. And she will go back to serve. Vikings trailing by two. Oh, Thompson with the ace. Dropped it right in the opening in front of Clevenger. Nothing Riley can do on that one. Even us at 18. And long for Thompson. Taylor Howard back to serve for the Zebras, up 19 18. Rochester trying to force a third set here in the JV matchup. That will help as the serve goes for an ace. Dunwoody into the net. And that one goes long. Kara Strasser to serve for Rochester. 21-19 in front are the Zebras. with the kill. <laughs> Patrick had to adjust there. Looks like your foot might have slipped out from under. And that drops in for the Vikings. Elise Smith checks in and she will be serving with the Vikings trailing by two. And Lett puts it home. And Lily will be back on the serve, 23-20. And that one dropped over from Wagner.
Callahan back to serve for Valley. Into the net, set point, 24-21. Riley Clevenger has a chance to force a third set here. Rainbow serve, handled by Patrick. And that one put home as the Zebras force a third set. Winning set number two, 25-21. So we are all square, one set apiece. We'll take a break and come back for the third and deciding set here between Rochester and Valley in the JV matchup in just a moment on RTC TV4. All right, welcome back here to Rochester as we move into set number three. Both sets went 25-21. The first one in favor of Tippecanoe Valley, the second one in favor of the Zebras. So we're going to go to 15 here and see if we can get a winner in the JV contest. Unfortunately, up at Argus, the Rochester Zebras comeback attempt fell short against the Culver Cavaliers, the Rochester Lady Zebras soccer team. Eliminated tonight in sectional play 4-3 to three to the Culver Cavaliers. They will move on to take on either Argus or Bremen on Thursday night. So both boys and girls soccer teams' seasons come to an end here tonight as the boys lost at Fort Wayne Canterbury to Fort Wayne Concordia 9-0. Strasser long there. Again, it is a senior night here for the Zebras. And they're going to call Rochester in the net. So we'll be having that uh, ceremony coming up in between the JV and varsity matchups. Four seniors for the Rochester Zebras this year. Bradley, Thomas, Hughes, and Houston. And that's going to drop in. Good placement there by Ella Sandbachen. For a valley point, so 2-0 here early in set three for the Vikings. This is uh, one of those in the third set you don't want to get too far behind because these points are amplified because they're only going to 15. That one might have been going long, and it hits the basketball goal and drops down and not able to get the play off of the goal. Howard back to serve, start things off for Rochester. Wow, that one's blocked. That one was blocked by Keaton Doran. Good play there. And Howard, unfortunately, short on that serve. Back to serve is Thompson. She had a good run in set number two for Valley from the service line. Came in with the Vikings trailing by two, I think, and, and left from the service line with the, they think they were up three or four. Strasser, good dig that time by Wagner. 
And long there, Strasser couldn't get on top of it. And a point for the Vikings. Thompson still serving. Alley back up by two. Oh, that's going to be tough. Yeah, too tight on that set. That's a big point right there. And Rochester, yeah, trailing 5-2. Coach Durkis calls a timeout here. The Zebras need to break the serve of the Vikings on this one here if they want to have a chance. Don't want to get too far down in the third set. Got Caston and Triton, Triton, easy for me to say, Triton uh, squaring off down in Fulton in a Hoosier North Conference matchup between the Comets and the Trojans. Looks like the JV match is done, so they're getting ready for varsity play right now. Culver hosting Westville up at Culver. So out of the timeout, it's going to be Thompson with the serve as the Vikings have opened up a 5-2 lead here in set three. And she serves an ace. So Thompson continues to do damage on the service line for the Zebras, or the Vikings, sorry, against the Zebras. And that one is long. So Rochester will get back the serve. And Strasser will have it trailing by three. And that one is wide. Out of shell with a nice dig there. Strasser couldn't get it. And it's going to be a point for the Vikings. Abby Koch back to serve. I believe that's Abby Koch. Only number nine listed. She's listed on the varsity roster. 7-4. And how to shell off the tape, and it drops. Sometimes you just get a little lucky, and how to shell was able to get it to fall on the Vikings side. And coming in to serve is number 15, Abby Darling. And that one drops down in front of Strasser. Lisa Smith checks in. She will be serving for the Vikings. And Patrick hits it into the net. Clevenger will go back and serve for Rochester. Howard hits that long. Callahan back to serve for Valley. Yeah. 
And a timeout by Coach Durkis as the Valley has opened up a four-point lead here late in set three. 10-6. Again, if you're just joining us here, we got senior night coming up, so they just called the senior parents down. They will be doing that in between the JV and varsity matchups. We have four seniors for the Rochester Zebras this year. Mackenzie Bradley, Alexis Thomas, Emily Hughes, and Kylie Houston, the four Rochester seniors. Unfortunately, the Rochester Zebras boys and girls soccer teams have been eliminated in sectional action tonight. Concordia knocked off the boys team 9-0. And the Culver community knocked off the girls team 4-3 up in Argus. And Valley... Kind of having their way here in this lighter part of the third set. Now up by five. See if the Zebras can find a way to battle back here in this one. And they drop one down. 11-7. And Durkis back to serve here for the Zebras. And Strasser. And unfortunately the second one goes wide. Point to the Vikings. Patrick back to serve for Valley. And she puts it into the net. How does Shell with the serve? And that one drops in for Coke. Vikings within two here of closing this one out. Back to serve is number two, Avery Wagner. And match point for Valley. Chester not giving up this last point easily. But that one's going to drop in. And that will do it. The Vikings take it in three. 15-8 in set number three. Take a look at part of that last point for you. So Valley takes the JV matchup in three, winning set one, 25-21. Rochester won set two, 25-21. Valley comes back and wins the third set, 15-8. to 
So we're going to have senior night activities here, and then we'll come back with pregame and more from Rochester High School in a moment here on RTC TV4. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Inside and outside the school. Kenzie's most memorable volleyball moment was following the sectional cross her junior year after they won the sectionals and the coach was coordinated. Extracurricular activities included fellowship of Christian athletes, National Honor Society, Student Council, Key Club, and Track. After graduation, Kennedy plans to go to Kenzie plans to go to basic training and A. IT training for National Guard to become a military police officer. After that, she will attend college to be a pediatric nurse. Ladies and gentlemen, Kinsey Bradley.
which will be given to our Lady Vikings and on starters. Kerrigan Callahan. Carly Ho. Abby Cook. Erica Henderson. Maggie Thompson. Emma Patrick. Ada Smith. And Sidney Nelson. And now the starters. Zero, Braden Bailey. Number two, Avery Wagner. Number three, Macy Perkinson. Number seven, Akeem Costello. Number eight, Mallory Burkus. Number 12, Emily McGriff. And number 15, Blood Blackburn. Not much emotion here tonight. I don't know what's uh, why it's so quiet, but uh, <laughs> boy, everybody's just kind of sitting down, not doing much. Two key factors in this match tonight. Libero play. Kylie Houston and Braden Bainey are two of the best in the TRC, if not the two best. Let's see how let's see who gets the better of that. I know that's not really a mano a mano when it comes to liberos, but let's see who, who outplays the other. And the other key is gonna be can Emily McGriff block Emily Hughes at the net. McGriff is a great blocker, but Emily hits a heavy, heavy ball. Lexi Thomas just plants one in the corner for the first point of the match, and now Rochester will serve. It'll be Kylie Houston. Tip by Kuskusakis. Right, just rub two nothing. Good start here for the Zebras. 
Remember, Rochester just trying to play spoiler in the TRC race. Rochester's 4-3 and three and Valley 6-1. and one. This is a must win for Valley. They still, have, uh, they still have some aspirations of getting into that race. And there's Durkis. Southwood, Southwood is 7-0. and all. Wabash and Valley are both 6-1. and one. Wabash plays Manchester tonight, and Southwood plays North Miami. Great dig, or great pass by Bradley, but Houston hits it out. We're at two all, Durkis. Yeah, I've been impressed with the Valley team this year, you know, as young as they are and, and with what they graduated last year and a new head coach, they've really had a nice uh, season. Yep, 17-9 and nine overall and 6-1 and one in the conference, as we mentioned. Nice dig, Durkis. Oh, Kuskasekis got him off guard there going in two. How will those freshmen that Valley handle the nerves? That is going to be a big factor as we go on tonight. Holloway serving. Holloway, a former Lady Viking. And that goes long. The Vikings wanted a tip, but I didn't see one. Did you? No. Nice idea by McGriff. Blackburn with the kill for the Vikings. Henderson will come in and serve for Valley. They don't have the years on there on the roster, Val. You know that one's blocked. That was Blackburn and McGriff. Blackburn's a sophomore. Good serve by Henderson. She's in there for her serving. But just another really athletic play by Kuskusekis. Blocked, but it's out of bounds. And that's Ava Smith back in, and it's great to have her back if you're a Valley fan. She might have the best vertical on the team. Hughes puts it home, finds the corner. You you have to have your you, you got to have your block involved somehow, or Hughes is going to just feast on that all day. Yeah. Kuskasek is back to serve with the Zebras trailing by one here early in set one. Great dig, Blackburn. Bullinger able to get it home off the block. Another big swing by the freshman. Yeah, we're talking about Valley's freshman. Rochester's freshman have been contributing a lot lately, too. That's a tough shot for a freshman. Or for that matter, a senior or any player from the right side. Oh, that might have been going out. Got a player down. That might have been going out. All right, back here at Rochester, they're able to uh, help the injured Valley player, Eric Henderson, off the floor. I don't know, Val, she wasn't able to put much weight on that right leg. No. So. I was hoping maybe she just hit her knee on the floor, but it might have been a turn. <laughs> Off a of Houston and down. Abby Coke has in the game, the Vikings. 
Erica Henderson's a very key server in their serving rotation. Yeah, she just had yeah. a, a great service yeah. run there. Uh, the Henderson sisters have been mean a lot to Valley Athletics. Of course, Erica's older sister, uh, Marie, on the cross-country team at Valley. Coke with the serve for the Vikings. And the overpass put down. That was Emily McGriff putting that one home. Vikings up two. And that one drops down. Vikings open up a three-point advantage. Boy, Rochester's feet seem to be stuck on the floor, and Valley seem to be playing with more energy since the injury. They're going to call a lift on the Vikings, so break for Rochester. Hughes will be back to serve for the Zebras. That was a shame because that was a really nice dig by Abby Cook. Vikings get their serve back. Brayden Bainey back to serve. A little bit of a ding dong. I'm not sure what happened there. And she drops that down in front of Holloway. Trivia question, Steve. Who is Brayden Bainey's great uncle? Oh, dear. I'm supposed to know that. What did he, what's he famous for? He is famous at Argus. At Argus. An uncle at Argus. Two-handed tip there by, I think it was, it was Lexi Thomas. Rochester still down 8-11 here in set one. Coleman, sir. There's so many options there. I have no idea, Val. Braden Bainey's great uncle is Eugene Snyder. Really? Pooch. Yep. Wow. I was going to say Teal because of the uh, relationship to Valley. Would have had the right coaching staff. Unbelievable. Abby Cook. Valley with a couple free ball points here lately in the early 12 9. Oh, nice job, Kuskasekis, uh, getting that out of the net. That one's put home by Costello. Didn't happen to see Mr. Snyder tonight when you were up in Argus, did you? I did not. And an ace. She's a freshman. She's a freshman. I'm guessing she's a freshman. Yep, Avery is a talented freshman. Into the net. 15 and 9 here in set one, and a timeout by Coach Leap. Seems like all the momentum after that injury has been on the side of the Vikings. Yeah. They've uh, they've got a little, I don't know, something to play for, pep in their step. Uh, they kind of woke them up, I guess. Nine to three, and they're nine to three since the Henderson injury, and I think they've just been able to keep the ball off the floor a little bit better. Yeah. Got a good one going down at Caston in set number two. Triton leads 15-9. The Comets took set number one, so that's a uh, big Hoosier North Conference battle down there at Caston. Yeah. 
The other volleyball match I'm kind of interested in, we're not televising it though, but I'm very curious about it, is Pioneer and Benton Central tonight in Oxford. Oh, another miscommunication. Well, I might be able to get you some scoring updates because my wife is over there. That one drops in for Valley. That was Durkis. She saw that shot and then executed it. And this is a really good rotation for Valley. Well, that was a great serve by Wagner. Kylie Houston saves the point. Off the block and out. Vikings opening up a 17-9 advantage here in set number one. Lexi took a little off of that and found the opening. Gets the Zebras into double digits. Bradley comes in and will be back at the service line for the Zebras. Yeah, I think Lexi kind of threw a change up at Valley and the block didn't handle it the way they would have liked. A little bit of a miss set there and that's gonna be hit out of bounds. Wasn't a whole lot that Durkis could do with that. Great play again by Cook. She's been great tonight. Thomas blocks. And that's going to go long. They're asking for a tip. Bainey wanted a tip, and they're going to say no. Point Zebras. Bradley still at the serve. Rochester does well in joust points with Hughes and Thomas. That one drops in for the Vikings. Macy Kirkenstein back to serve. Again, Valley playing without one of their best hitters, Bree Sheets. Zebras drop it in. Houston back to serve. Rochester wins another joust point at the net. Yeah, you would think with uh, Kuskasekis and Thomas and Hughes all very, very strong. They're going to get a lot of those. Goes off of Bradley, then Houston. Durkis back to serve. So is Mallory related to Coach Durkis? I don't believe so. No? Got a timeout. Is that a Rochester timeout? I believe so. All right. 19-13 here in set one. It was a spirited JV match. Uh, they split 25-21, set one and two. Valley won first one 25-21, then Rochester won second set 25-21, and then Valley came back and won the third 15-8. So it was, uh, mm -hmm. it was a pretty good uh, back and forth there. The first two sets, Valley kind of ran away with it a little bit there in, in set number three, but got a lot of young yeah. talent on both sides. Rochester has not played since last Thursday when they beat Winnemac. Valley played on Saturday at the Caston Tournament and finished in second place. Lost in the uh, championship match to the host Lady Comets. So Rochester has really gotten some good practice in lately, or at least we assume it's been good practice. That, one is, that is Blackburn. Overpass. 
And they're going to call the Zebras in the net on that one. I think it went out of bounds anyway. So Valley nearing the end here in set one. 21-13. Cool. Uh, Passing issue there on both sides. That was a strange. This is one of the stranger rallies we'll see. Blocked. That Hughes. Was Hughes. Zebras needed that. Holloway comes in. She'll have the serve. Call Valley in the net. <laughs> Off of the Zebras and out point for Valley. Colorado Blackburn's playing very, very well tonight. Costello back, serve for the Vikings. But that was a heck of a shot by Coleman because the block was right there. In, Hughes puts it home. Chris Kasekis will serve for Rochester. And off the block, or off the dig, off of Kirkenstein, however you want to call it. Big shot there by Hughes. Kuskusakis, you don't know who she's serving to, but you know she's serving away from Bainey. Nice serve, but a nice pass, too. Davis Smith coming up big again. I think Rochester... I think some players, some people from Rochester thought the ball was not off the block, but it sure looked like it was off the block. Yeah, I and Alexa thought so. Alexa is talking to the uh, the chair official. Valley up 23-17. I don't think it goes that sharp to the side if it's not off the block, if it's just off the net. And they're going to say in the net, over the net. What is that call exactly? Over the net? Yeah. So I put Hughes back. Zebras within five, but the Vikings within two of closing out set number one. Off of the tape. Hughes with the ace. Well, we definitely know that she can get hot from the service yeah. line. Boy, was that the old, uh, she's 95% free throw shooter jinx there? That's exactly what I was thinking. All right, set point for Valley. Free ball it over. Short set. Coleman, and it's going to drop. Set number one goes to the Vikings, 25-19. Don't forget to redeem that uh, free big match tomorrow in the Fortress and Edition at the Rochester McDonald's. 
We'll take a break and come back with more here from Rochester High School. You're watching RTC TV4. All right, House is going to start us off here in set number two. The Vikings lead one set to zero. Nice dig there by Kylie. Oh. A ding dong by Valley after playing a pretty error free first set. That was an amazing pass by Braden Bainey. I mean, right on the button, even though she had to go down to her knees. Leap off the block with the kill. And Kennedy was not a big factor in the first set, so that's got to be a good sign for Rochester. And an ace for Houston. Good start here in the second set for the Zebras, 3-0. Senior Kylie Houston on the serve. And that one into the net. Kirkenstein will serve for Valley. Rochester just looked tentative on the pass there. Just looked, I mean, it wasn't an ace. But it... Off the block. There Hughes gets a little excited. Holloway comes in and we'll have the serve. Just long. That was right there, but it was just a little long. Dirk is back to serve at four Valley. And Bradley can't get the pass off. Knots us at four. That serve was wicked by Mallory Durkis. That. Off the block, <laughs> off of Valley. Well, Rochester won the point, but that was a really nice effort by Durkis to keep the ball up. Kuskasekis has the serve for the Zebras. And she sets in an ace, drops it right in front of Wagner. A great placement there by Kuskasekis. Yeah. Valley's back row playing pretty deep. I think she might try that a few more times to see if Lander can make the adjustment. Great dig, Houston. And just long there by Hughes. Costello will have the serve for Valley. Looking for a tip call, but they're not going to get it. I don't think that was tipped at all. Hughes will go back and have the serve for the Zebras up 7-5. Boy, Rochester won the point, but Bainey had a great dig on that point. Hit the antenna.
Long for Hughes. I don't keep track of service errors, but I think that category would definitely favor Valley at this point. Yeah, they haven't been able to, the, the uh, Zebras haven't been able to really stack up a big uh, run. Three or four has been about the most I uh, remember. And that one is out. Coleman back to serve for the Zebras. That was not an easy shot that Kylie Coleman hit. She was behind the net and behind Kuskusekis, and that was a tough angle, but she put in a nice attack. Didn't get a kill out of it, but it was a nice shot. Good dig by Kuskusekis. Block. Cook with a nice dig, and that one's going to go long. Ava Smith hits it long. I think the Rochester block having a little bit of an impact on Ava Smith. Yeah. I think she, she sailed a couple shots high to avoid the block. Oh, that was a heck of a play by Houston. And Lee puts it home. The Zebras have a five-point lead here in set number two. Two years ago here, Rochester beat Valley in five. Last year at Valley, Rochester beat Valley in four. So if you're expecting a quick match, I, uh, uh, I hate to tell you this, but I think we're going to be here for a while, at least if the history says anything. Oh, good job there. Houston almost got that back, but couldn't. Green Bainey going to be serving for Valley. Abby Cook has been playing very, very well for Valley so far. Thomas off the block and down. Bradley that was a great pass by Emma Sells. That serve had some heat on it, and Emma was all over it and got it right to Kuskusakis. Bradley with the serve for the Zebras. Durkis puts it home. David Rocker back in for Timothy Valley. Along with Michaela Costello. Avery Wagner to serve. Wagner in and will serve for Valley. This has been a really good rotation for Valley so far. Would that have gone out? I think it would have gone out. Good dig by Houston. Leap into the net. And the Vikings have cut the lead down to two. This rotation here, like you said, is has been really good for Valley so far tonight. Yeah, Valley playing with good tempo too. And that's going to be into the antenna. Houston back to serve for the Zebras. Lead is three. Kuskasekis wins that one. Kuskasekis' timing is so good. Is that Callahan that put that one down? That was Costello, I believe. Costello. Kirkenstein will be back to serve. Is she a senior this year or junior? Macy's a senior. 
And the kill for the Zebras. Macy's brother Owen got a uh, college offer to play baseball at a community college in Illinois, I believe. I saw that. Congratulations to him. Turk is back to serve for Valley. Drove the Zebras back, and the point for the Vikings back to within one is Valley. Let's see if that sets up Rochester for the short serve here. I thought that might have been going out. And another shank. Well, the Vikings have come back from five down and tied it at 14. Long for Coleman. And the Vikings regain the lead here in set two. Another big play by Avery Wagner on that play. Hughes puts it home. That was big for the Zebras. They needed to break that serve. Kuskasake is back to serve, knotted at 15. Hughes! Well, that was a little bit uh, out of rhythm there, but uh, Hughes able to put that one down. That looked almost like a ding-dong, and Hughes just said, well, i got to hit it over now. <laughs> Let's end any doubt about it. And the ace! Well, we've had some uh, runs here in set number two, and the Zebras come back from tied at 14 to fit lead 17-15. <laughs> Casting and Triton are knotted at one set apiece. 16 to 14 in the third. Comets with the lead. Just as a point of comparison, uh, Valley lost to Triton earlier this year. Rochester beat Triton. Caston just beat Valley. I don't know what all that means. I'm just saying. <laughs> we should mention uh, Valley drew West Noble. Rochester got a bye and the other day. And they're at uh, Lakeland, correct? Sectionals at Lakeland. Valley didn't get a bye, so they'll have to make two trips to Lakeland. Sectionals start on Thursday, October 14th. Yeah, that's going to be nice for the Zebras. They get that first round bye, so they don't have to go to Bremen until Saturday. Right. Rochester will play either South Central or Westville in their uh, semifinal match. Nice, dig, nice pass, Holloway. That one is out. I'm watching Westville play right now up at Culver. And I'm just thinking it might end up being South Central. Culver took set one against the Blackhawks 25-20. Nothing against the Cavaliers, but their volleyball team is a little young this year. Coleman misses and puts the Vikings back up one. Yeah. After a nice pass by Lily Lett, but Rochester couldn't do anything with it. Oh 
Blackburn puts that one home for the Vikings. Valley back in front by two here late in set number two. Goes down for Hughes. Well, that was a heck of a set by Kuskusakis. I mean, Hughes had to get that swing in. With the way the momentum of this match was going. Hughes back to serve for Rochester. <laughs> and goes back McGriff. over to Valley on... The miss pass. <laughs> Cook will serve for Valley. Coke. Coke? Cook. Cook. Good job by Cook. Blocked at the net. Oh, what a play by Bainey. And that hits the antenna. Well, she's not one of the best liberos in the league because of uh, not being able to make those plays. That was a great job. She saved the point because Kirkenstein and Cook tripped into each other. Yeah. I mean, Bainey didn't get that. That was it. Coleman, and she's going to go long. Bainey will go back and serve for the Vikings. 21 at 19. And that was definitely going out. Had a couple of those possible going out. So I'd, the, yeah, uh, I'd count three of Valley's 22 points in this game. Ooh. Out. Tough play for Valley there. The Zebras pick up the point. An exchange of gifts there. I mean, Rochester touches a serve that was going to go out, and Valley with just a ding-dong. That, that should have been hit with authority. Sells with a nice dig. And Bainey couldn't get around Durkis. And that one drops for a zebra point. We've got a timeout by Valley as the zebras have gotten back to within one, 22 21. Interesting that Coach Durf would use her second timeout here, but I think it's a good, good idea after that last point. And they're just take a breath and calm down and remind, remind your players hey, we're in the lead here in this set. Don't panic. Let's get a side out and let's win the game. Yeah. A couple of the points they've given up here as of late have been just uh, people getting in you know, each other's way. That one where they hit it wide on that shot two points ago. Henderson back out on the bench for the Vikings, but she's got her leg up and looks like she's on ice. Mm -hmm. Blocked and down. Smith in the net, but they were going to... was the call. Bradley nodded at 22 with the serve. And blocked by Thomas. Back in front, two to go for the Zebras. That was a heck of a play by Lexi. In, just inside the line. 
Wagner back to serve. And misplayed there by Thomas. And Rochester will take a timeout. When we come back, it's going to be set point for Valley. Wasn't even that real uh, crazy of a serve. It just kind of went yeah. shanked it, I guess you'd say. I think people know that Riley Holloway has a connection to Valley. Kenzie Bradley does too. Her sister, oldest sister, went to Valley. People know about, we know about uh, Kenzie and Kendall go to Rochester, but um, McKenna, who was their oldest uh, sister, uh, went to Valley. Okay. Uh, McKenna was a really good tennis player. I don't think she played volleyball. And that one is unreal. In. What a serve by Avery Wagner. So the Vikings take set two, 25-23, and lead two sets to zero as we move into the third set. Take a break and come back with that third set here from Rochester in just a moment on RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Rochester as we move into set number three. Kirkenstein gets the first point for Tipkinu Valley. I don't think we had a single double hit in the first two sets, and all of a sudden we have a double hit in the to start the third set, and then an ace by Kirkenstein, and all of a sudden Valley's up two nothing. We'll lead the match two sets to zero. One set, 125-19. One set, 225-23. And that one is a point for Rochester. Houston will be back to serve for the Zebras. Well, and Rochester had that four-match winning streak. It was, and I don't think the, the opposing team scored like 20 points in a set, like once out of 12 sets. I mean, Rochester was acing their opponents, and they were preventing the other teams from getting aces. It has not been that way in this match. That one is long. Hughes, that one, nice dig. It's going to be a point for the Zebras. That was a nice dig there by Costello. Yeah. Three straight by Rochester, and they're back in front here in set three. What a play. Bainey and Blackburn. Boy, there's Vikings going everywhere on that one. And Lee puts that one away. Name a Valley player that did not wind up on the floor on that point. I don't think that uh, <laughs> there weren't the, many. The coach? <laughs> no, you said player. Yeah. None, on, none that were playing. Five straight now from Rochester. This is the first time Valley's looked a little tentative in their passing. Well, maybe I shouldn't say the first time, but the first maybe extended time. Great Bradley, dig. Bradley, yeah. Oh, Hughes. I think Kuskasekis was in... Yep. The right spot there, but unfortunately, Emily didn't see her. I mean, from, from where Durkis was, you can't tell her, or from where Hughes was, you can't tell her not to touch it. No, I know. Just a bad yeah. break. Yeah. 
Holloway comes Being great in. for Rochester there. Durkis has been serving the heck out of the ball, but she puts one in the net there. Blackburn with the big kill for Valley. Costello back to serve for Valley. And she serves it out, so a couple service errors in a row by the Vikings. Let's see if the Zebras can take advantage here. Kuskasekis with the serve for Rochester. And down for Blackburn. Blackburn doesn't look all that tall over there, but boy, she is deadly from that left side, Val. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hughes kept it alive. I was just going to say that was a really nice block by McGriff. Yeah. And then he, before you could spit it out, Hughes had sent it back. Emily with the serve. Great job Cook covering that roll shot that Coleman hit so well. Thomas puts it home. Thomas more of a defensive player, but she puts that one down for the Zebras. Hughes looks a little tentative on her serve, just kind of, and just as I say it, an ace. Never mind. 10-5 Rochester. Well, these are the kind of updates you get from your daughter when you're asking how their uh, team is doing. Losing bad, varsity. <laughs> All right, thanks. Smith again. They need to serve. Almost a ding-dong. So Coleman able to put it down off of Cook. Well, that was big. Rochester able to win a point out of system. I think that was Emma Sells who got an assist there, was it? Was it not? Yes, I think it was. Coleman with the serve. And that one hit into the net. Smith not able to get on top of it. Smith not quite as comfortable from the opposite as she is from the left side. Zebra is pulling away a little bit here in set number three. And the Vikings... Coach Durf wants a timeout as they're trailing at 13-6 here in set number three. Ashley Durf has a great temperament for a volleyball coach. You know, she's encouraging, but knows when to kind of, when she's got to get tough, she knows when she has to get tough. You know, she's a Valley grad, learned the game under, you know, John Hutton. Right. And it was John Hutton who, after her playing career was over, said, have you ever thought about getting into coaching? And she was like, no, I haven't really thought about it. But, And, you know, she, I mean, spent, I mean, talk about, earn, you know, paying your dues. I mean, she spent a whole bunch of years down at the middle school level, then worked her way up to the JV level where she worked under Mallory Eaton, then last year under Doug West. I mean, she and her, she and her husband are both uh, Valley grads. Yeah. 
And I, I know their son is on the football team, uh, freshman, I think, freshman or sophomore. Okay. I mean, they bleed green and yellow. A lot of green and yellow, yep. yeah. Good, another good serve by Rochester. And the freshman puts that one away. Again, that is a tough shot for a senior, a junior, or a sophomore that Audrey's a freshman and can put that one down. That is not easy, and she makes it look easy. Yeah. Boy, Coleman serving great. How good of a year has uh, Bullinger had for the uh, Zebras uh, coming in as a freshman? I remember that game at Pioneer. That was the first time I think she got, you know, it was early in the season, but... Mm -hmm. A couple other girls came in. They looked like deer, you know, deer in the headlights, and, and she just never had that look. I mean, she was – just felt like she was right at home. Mm -hmm. So here's a little better update. My wife texted back, said Pioneer lost the first two games down 24-20 in set number three. Well, Valley isn't avoiding anybody. We should mention last night, big matchup with the northern half of the state in that Midwest Conference with uh, South Newton meeting Frontier in four. Of course, that was a Frontier team that beat Pioneer last week. Right. Big, big win for the uh, Lady Rebels who win the Midwest Conference. That was essentially a conference championship. Beautiful tip by Lexi Thomas. I will say there was one person missing on that when they were playing Frontier that might have helped. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. She might have helped. Yeah. But and Haley Kripe would have made a difference? Yeah, possibly. Haley the Difference Maker Kripe. That's her new nickname. But I can't blame her for not being there. She was out in Lawrence taking her official. Kirkenstein serving. She's number one in the serving rotation. Good job by the Zebras getting that serve back. And off the tip. So Valley battling back there within six. Trying to close this out in straight sets. And again, off the tape. <laughs> Great block, Durkis. Costello. And it, it was. But it's, there was a dig by Kirkenstein earlier in the point. That was phenomenal. And now an ace. And now a timeout by the Zebras. Valley back to within three. Well, we kind of thought this one might be a back-and-forth battle down at Caston between the Comets and the Triton Trojans, and Caston won the first set. It looks like the Trojans have come back and won two sets in a row, and Caston leads 15-9 in set number four. The Caston wins. They finish 6-1 and one in the Hoosier North. Triton. Pioneers already won the conference. They're 7-0. Oh. They're, they're in the bank at 7-0. Just, how many losses does Triton have? Just one, or do they have multiple? I think, Tri I think Triton has two. Uh, so Kirkenstein will have the serve here for Valley coming out of the Zebra timeout. And off of Kirkenstein. Thomas with the big kill. That was, a, that was senior leadership there for you. Lexi said, I'm taking this serve, and 
I'm taking the swing too as they work the give and go. And I wouldn't say Lexi's a phenomenal passer, but she handled that one beautifully. And then an ace by Houston at 17 12. Let's see if Houston can get a few serves in here. She had a nice service run earlier in the set. Rotation error on Valley. Oh. On Valley or Rochester? No, never. Sorry. Well, Renee Durkis is the Rochester JV coach. She's she and Sarah Dalton and Sarah, Sarah Dalton are explaining what happened. And now the officials are going to talk it over. Replay the point. That's big. Whatever their explanation was, it uh, was worthy of a replay. So now Valley's got to get back into their rotation. Well, the way Houston's been serving, Rochester didn't want to lose a serve like that. With Right. Didn't want to lose Houston serve like that. Right. Dara Strasser has checked in for Rochester. Freshman, number 10, in black. Whatever Renee Durkis and Sarah Dalton said, it, it worked. That'll be a good one to find out on the post game, if they can tell you. Bradley kept that one alive. And that one is in. Man, Mallory Dirk is just playing with a purpose tonight. Big hit from the junior. What a pass by Kylie Houston. Yeah. I mean, that was a good serve. That was a really good serve, and she controlled it. And Kuskusik has barely had to move for it. That was one of the hardest hit balls I've seen leap all year. Yeah. I think they're getting Hughes coming over. Okay, Costello, Costello to serve at 14 18. Hughes and Kuskasekis switching roles there a little bit. Hughes passing it over to Kuskasekis, yeah. and then Kuskasekis blocking that. A hard-fought, well-earned point for the ladies' ease there. Kuskasekis back to serve. Sebers back in front by five here in set three. Oh, that was great just getting that over. Oh, Bullinger. Oh, my gosh, Val. Oh, whoa. Another nice dick, Coleman. Almost a ding dong. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh. Boy, that was too hard of a fought point for them to lose. When, well, their Valley won an out of system point, and I'm not sure what is going on here. Kirkenstein was huge in that point. And that was going out. That was going to be close. I, I think it was dying. It might have dropped. Each team has one timeout left in this set. I'm not sure about that. Must have kind of ticked off one player and hit off another. That was the first double hit call on Valley all night, and it's 20 to 17. Emily McGriff is meeting Hughes at the net. We talked about that at the pregame. We'll call that a lift? No, a net uh, violation. Under, under the net, I think. 21 17, Hughes with the serve. Good tip coverage, Couscous Hakus. <laughs> Coleman with the kill to get it to 22-17. Three straight points for Rochester. And Valley in the net. Seabirds pick up point number 23. Rochester's played crisp volleyball these last four points. Handling the ball beautifully, hitting it exactly where they want. Hughes serve goes into the net. And that will give Bainey the serve for Valley. And her serve goes long, giving Rochester set point. And it'll be Coleman back to serve. Sydney Nelson now in the match for Valley. We have not seen her all night. Overpass, and it drops. That was big, and now Wagner gets to serve. You know, if anybody back there can rattle off a bunch for Valley, it would be Wagner. Kuskasekis puts it home. 
Zebras stay alive, winning set number three, 25 19. Kuskusik has got the kill, but I thought Lexi Thomas, I think she threw him a changeup. I think they were expecting Lexi to go deep with the tip, and she went short. Going into set number four, Valley leads two sets to one. We'll take a break and come back for that set here in just a moment on RTC. All right, back here at Rochester High School as we move into set number four. Rochester able to win that third set to stay alive here in the match, 25-19. And Rochester's serve receive got a lot better, I thought, in set three. And their serving got a lot better in set three. Hobson to serve to start set four. Sydney Nelson. The pass. And long by Hughes. Kirkenstein yeah. back to serve for Valley. When, when Emily misses, it's because she's hitting the side of the ball and not the top of it. Hit the top of the ball. Oh, uh, what a play by Leap. Yeah, great adjustment because that was a bad set by Kuskasekis. I don't, I don't know how she was able to uh, even get back behind that ball. Holloway in to serve for Rochester. Bainey calls off Nelson. Blocked, but it's going to drop wide. Point for Valley. Back to serve is Durkis. I think that was going long. Double hit called. I agree with that one. I thought that one was even Kuskusek is had kind of a sheepish look on her face it looked like. Coleman long on that one. The Zebras need to find some of that magic they had in that third set here. They're yeah. down 4-1 early in set four. Oh, that was way long. That wasn't a little bit long. That was almost out of the uh, basketball line. Kuskasek is back to serve for Rochester. That's a left. Yep. yep. Great attempt there, and unfortunately, it's going to be a point for Valley. Geez, Rochester got about three swings in at that point. I mean, that was just great defense by Valley the whole point. Hard earned, well earned point by Valley. Costello serving for Valley. Did it hit like the side of the flag? It was right there. I don't know if it hit it or not. Great dig, Kirkenstein. Oh. Bollinger got a hand on it, but nothing she could do to dig that out after the touch. And McGriff wins a joust. Oh, man. What a... Out of system set by Kylie Houston. Put Hughes back to the serve. I mean, I thought for sure that was going to be free balled over, and she put it right on Bollinger's fingertips. Hughes with the ace. I've never known as Ro Rochester, even going back to the Falky years, of kind of aiming at somebody on the other team you think is a bad passer, but it seems like they're aiming for some 
some particular girls. Or at least they're keeping trying to keep the ball away from Braden Bainey. Maybe more of that than aiming at certain ones. Aiming away from. Uh, aiming away from Bainey and yeah. going after some of the youngsters. Cook with the serve. Oh, good touch there by Thomas. Coleman now to serve. It's amazing how many good middle hitters Rochester's had over the years. Obviously, Maddie Sailors was probably stands out, but they've had so many good ones. And that one goes to Rochester. A couple nice hits there, Leap and Bollinger. Yeah, Leap gets the kill, but I thought it was Bollinger who had a great shot. Really kind of handcuffed Valley. Good tip coverage. Oh, it hits off a leap out of bounds. She was trying to get out of the way. And it just kind of came right into her. Nothing she could do. Bainey back to serve for the Vikings. Kasten came back. And that's going to drop in. Kasten came back from 2-1 down Val and won 15-13 in set five. Awesome. So that's a big win for the Comets. To go 6-1 in the TR, to go 6-1 in the Hoosier North, what an accomplishment for Kasten. Again, Valley not getting a lot of hits from the uh, opposite side, but Dorcas hits so well out of the middle that it does it hasn't really mattered. As Bainey puts a serve into the net, Valley still leads 9-7 here in the fourth. I mean, Mallory Durkis, that shot out of the middle along the right sideline, that is, that is her shot. She can put that on a dime. Oh, ding-dong there for Valley. And Rochester back within one. Lexi Thomas there to meet Durkis at the net. Oh. Somehow they kept that alive, but Kuskasek is not able to get it over the net. I didn't really see what happened there, Val. How did they keep that thing going? I don't know. All I know is that was a heck of a play by Michaela Costello. To Thomas with the kill. Rochester backed within one. This is an inspired Lexi Thomas. This is she's been getting better and better as the seasons progressed, and this is the best I've, I've ever seen her play volleyball. That's got to be, ooh. Rochester all the way back, even at 10. I thought that was close to being in the net by Rochester, but Hughes didn't. Hughes knew she hadn't touched the net, so. And Houston with the ace. Probably going to see a timeout here, and we do. Coach Durf wants to talk it over. All the momentum is back on the Zebras' side here. 11-10 in set four. Valley led earlier in this set, 6-2. Rochester on a 9-4 run since.
Both of these schools' football teams will be on the road on Friday night. Valley at Wabash, Rochester at North Miami. See a lot of Valley football players here tonight. See a Va couple, yeah. Valley in the top 15 in the state in both offensive scoring average and defensive scoring average. Yeah, they're doing okay this year. Yep. Scoring. What are they averaging, 43 a game? 44 a game, and they 44. allow si and they allow six. <laughs> wow. And uh, McCon... I heard a little grumbling from the Valley kids. Uh, McConaughey scored on the last play of the game last week to only lose 57 to six. <laughs> a 25-yard touchdown pass against the JV. They were not uh, thrilled by that. They wanted a shutout, but didn't get it. But they'll have to settle for seven and zero for the first time since 1987. Wow. Oh, what a shot from Hughes off of Bainey. Hughes, that's just an instinctive shot by Hughes. I don't know how you, if, again, if you hit the ball like her, hey, if you can put that down, put it down. Is that blocked or that was in the net? Costello in the net. Hit it a little flat-footed. Houston with a nice run here from the service line. And an ace. What was the score when she took over the serve? 10 9. 10 9 Valley. Rochester's won six straight points. Another good serve. Oh my goodness. Cook at Nelson. Looks like they're okay. Ah, uh, Cook isn't. She's she's hurting. I think she uh, got hit in the uh, collarbone. What happened there? Oh my goodness, that is a gift. I don't know. I think is Hughes, Hughes okay? I mean, she went down. That should have been a. Looks like she might have tweaked an ankle. I thought that was going to be massacred, and it wasn't. <laughs> Off the net. All the way in. Emily Surf. Hughes is clearly not 100% at all. That was big time by Durkis. I mean, again, Valley's not gotten a lot of swings from the opposite, but that was right there, and that was unblockable. Sieber's trying to come back from two down and force a four, uh, fifth set here. Great play by Hughes to adjust and not touch the net. Miss hit. Point Rochester. You know, people don't, you know, it's, don't think conditioning isn't a factor in this match. Blackburn misses on the tip. It's 18-12. Couple hitting errors there by Valley in the last couple points. Valley was up six to two earlier in this set. They're now down 18-12. And Coleman.
Coleman into the net. Again, just hitting it from the the opposite forces. If you can get it over, I mean, Valley doesn't cover the Rochester doesn't cover that side of the block very well. Costello serves for Valley. Good job, Hughes, getting that across. A double hit called on Valley. Didn't see that much until this set. And Hughes back to serve. Let's see if Hughes jumps on the serve. She doesn't. She usually has a jump serve. Eva Smith. Cook back in, and she will be serving. Let's see how this she's has been doing. The, this has been the fall of Ava. Ava Thomas, Ava Smith. A lot of girls named Ava doing big things. Are they all freshmen, or is it just the uh, Thomas? Just Thomas. Ava Smith is a sophomore. No. They're all underclassmen then. Yep. Pulling her into the net. Valley back to within four. Trying to close this one out. And Cook doesn't seem to be suffering any ill effects from that uh, hit earlier. And the Zebras want a timeout. Valley back to within three, 1916 here in set number four. I think that was a kind of a ding dong. It looked like Houston was right there, and then somebody cut in front of her. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? With the way the momentum has shifted many times in this uh, match. Looks like Emily Hughes getting like a tape job of some sort. Out of the timeout, Cook with the serve. The Vikings to within three. <laughs> and the kill from Smith. Ava Smith looks like she wants the ball. Coleman goes wide. Valley within one. This is another one of those rotations for Valley that seems to be very effective. Five straight points for Valley. And that was probably going long, but uh, I don't know. You think that would have been long? It looked like it might have been long. I thought it was in, but I think if the ball doesn't hit the ceiling, I think Valley gets to it. Yeah. I mean, it hit the ceiling and went straight down. Usually it favors the defensive team, but that diamond hurt it. And Coleman into the net. Not a good time for a service error for Rochester. Braden Bainey back to serve for the Vikings. Kirkenstein drops that in between Strasser and Thomas. Not kind of a dump, but a kind of a straight set, and I don't think she had done that very often. And that goes the other way off of the basketball goal. And the Vikings all the way back in front here. Valley on an 8-1 run. And 
That one put away by Durkis. I think the air kind of went out of the gym for the Rochester side. It just it seems like they've lost their lost their spunk a little bit here. And that's what happens when you're a senior leader. I mean, that kind of coincided with Hughes having to leave the match. She's on the sideline. She's standing up. She's in the huddle. Can she rotate back in, or is she done? I don't think she's done, unless she's just hurting. But they they pulled her out on her normal rotation. Yeah, they they didn't. Yeah. Well, let's see what the zebras can do here. Coming out of the timeout, trailing now by two in set number four. Braden Bainey still on the service line for Valley. Blackburn puts that one home. Match point for the Vikings. Six straight points for Valley. They were down 19-13, 11-1 since then. Off the tape. Oh, they kept it alive. They kept it alive. Valley was celebrating, and the Zebras kept that one alive. What a play by Kennedy. Lee just reacted, just stuck out her left hand and knocked it over the net. The Vikings thought they won the match. So let's see what Rochester can do with it. Still match point for Tipkinee Valley. Talking to the line judge. I don't know what the line judge's role would have in that point anyway. No, it wasn't any kind of a line question. Almost a ding dong there. And they go to Durkis on match point and she puts it down. So the Vikings win it in four 25 19, 25 23, 19 25. 25-21 over Rochester. Valley keeps their hopes alive in conference, moving to 7-1, and 18-9 overall. Rochester drops to 10-16, and 4-4 four and four in TRC conference. Well, it was what we expected. I mean... We didn't expect this to go easy for either team. And for Valley, they keep their hopes for a TRC title alive. That's the main headline coming out of this. And Southwood comes to town on Thursday night, and Valley's got a shot. Yeah. It's a great Southwood team. They're 21-3. and three.